Welcome to Blending the Family, the podcast. Topics can range from finding your faith, dating after divorce, and mental health. Here's your host, whose math tutor once said he should probably join the circus, Tommy Maloney. Welcome to another edition of the podcast known as Blending the Family. I am your host, Tommy Maloney, and can you hear the squeaky chair? I'm sorry. Need to uh, put a chair in the budget for 2020. How are you? You doing good? I'm, I'm uh, so excited to be with you. Actually recording this in the home office. I'm actually home, excited, happy not doing this in a hotel. I am uh, watching the snowfall from the, uh, from the office here. We are supposedly here in Colorado are supposed to get a blizzard. Not looking forward to it. Because somehow, some way, I gotta pick up the boy. I gotta pick up the boy. And, uh, yeah. So, there you go. There's, uh, there's that, uh, little bit of news for you. Are you doing good? Are you staying warm? I'm, uh, I'm a little, a little overexcited because I'm, I'm home. I like being home. I hate being on the road. So, anyway, uh, where should we go? Let's go. Let's talk about our guest. We have Matt Schneider. On the podcast, he is the co-founder of City Dads Groups, City Dads Groups, and I just found out there's a City Dad Group here in the Denver area. I will be looking them up and checking them out. There, uh, I believe Matt said there's 41, 40 uh, of these City Dad Groups in the United States, one in Toronto, so our Canadian friends, you, you need to grow that. We, we got to go um, Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, Calgary, Edmonton, um, Whitehorse. Um, that's all I can think of right now in the spur of the moment of uh, trying to help you, help you dads, you dads and you moms um, find uh, dad groups to, to, uh, to share to share with uh, your feelings and um, share your parenting tips, which would be really cool. Uh, Matt and I talk about several things. We talk about. Uh, let's go here. I want to. I, I want to give a shout out to uh, James. If you are on Instagram, you can find James at Fatherhood is Lit. Fatherhood is Lit. L I T. Hashtag Fatherhood is Lit. Uh, James, he is one of those great, fantastic, uh, fun, fun video dads. He's he's really good. Um, we also talk about who has more. What's the word I want to say? I don't want to do a spoiler alert, but who has more anxiety, moms or dads? We talk about that, and gosh, a lot. We talk a lot. Uh, Oh, um, we talk about uh, Matt has his own podcast. We talk about that. And everything I'm talking about will be in the show notes. Don't worry. Don't worry. You don't have to write things down. You'll just look at the show notes. And there you go. So Matt Schneider, co-founder of City Dads Group. Uh, The other co-founder is Lance Summerfield. So you can look those guys up. Well, like I said, I'm home. Watching the snow come down, it is sticking on the grass, but it's not sticking on the roads. It was warm uh, the past couple days, and I'm hoping I'm hoping that this so-called blizzard just blows by. That it really doesn't happen, if that makes sense, and it's interfering with. I mean, anytime you you have nasty weather, it interferes with everybody's lives. And so I'm trying to figure out, because uh, I don't know if I've ever mentioned this, but we only have uh, one car. I got rid of my car a couple years ago. And so at times, it's an inconvenience when I don't have a car, when I need things to do. And then we have to figure out, do I go rent a car? So I went online yesterday. To rent a car, and I had enough uh, points to rent a car, so I did that, and I got a call from the local 
car rental place. Not going to mention names. I'm going to be nice. And the guy gives me a total. I said, total? No, no, no. I'm free. This is free. I'm using points. I'm using, you know, miles. You know, that kind of cool stuff. He says, yeah, but that's not how it was It was booked. I said, I hit the, I hit the free day. They had free day on the app. Well, long story short, it didn't take. The free day didn't take, so I went back to rebook it. And because it's a day before a holiday, or, yeah, well, we're, we're getting close to Thanksgiving, all the rates went up. So now the amount of points I needed for a free day, uh, I don't have enough points because they jacked up their rates. Bastards. So now I'm in a panic trying to figure out, all right, How in the world am I going to get the boy? But I'll figure it out. We'll figure it out together. How's that? Well, that you and I would be more of a family family thing. Um, That's about it, really. Just, again, happy, excited to be home. And we have Matt Schneider of City Dad Groups on the the, uh, podcast. And so I hope you enjoy this. I hope you'll share this. Um, Please leave a rating and review. Uh, however you get this podcast. Um, so there, I'm going to say I'm a few hundred more times, which drives me nuts. So there, and I'll say so there. So ums and so there. So there. Well, as our good friend, one day he'll be our good friend. Terry Crews would say, your success is my success. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy belated Thanksgiving, happy maybe early 2020 Thanksgiving when you're listening to this. I don't know. I don't control your listening habits and that's okay. But thank you for listening anyway. And thank you for sharing. All right. You, you, you know who I'm talking to. You have a great day. Well, thank you for doing this, Matt. I I greatly appreciate it. And I really um, appreciate what your organization is is trying to do and it's something that um if if you don't mind we'll just get right into it is that okay yeah sounds great awesome um and we'll also if you want we can have the debate why chicago pizza is better than new york pizza but we'll 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 wait on that one all right okay um so you and your co-founder uh lance found an itch you guys scratched it how did how did that and I don't want to call it an aha moment because I think this was more of a breaking point for the two of you uh, for creating uh, the City Dads Group. Is that would that be a fair assessment? Yeah, I mean, really, at the beginning, it was it was the breaking point for us. If, if nothing else, uh, we were two at home dads in New York City. I'd been home for three years. Lance was. Uh, just starting out as an at-home dad, his, his wife had just gone back to work after maternity leave, and he called me up and said, what have you been doing in New York uh, for the last three years? Everything is for moms. It's mommy and me play groups and mommy and me gym class and art class and yoga class. There's nothing for dads. And of course, I said, I've been hanging out with moms and I've been hanging out with nannies and hadn't thought that much about it. And thankfully, Lance is much more uh, proactive as well as social. Uh, and he said, well, we, we're going to be hanging out. Let's, let's try to get some other guys to hang out with us. How did you guys get that first uh, message out? Uh, somebody, well, I think Lance started posting flyers in his, around his building. We live in New York City. We both live in high rises. So uh, that's how he started. But then somebody pretty early on told him about uh, a fairly new site called meetup.com. Uh Um, and, uh, it was a very easy way to do exactly what we were trying to do, bring, uh, like-minded people together in this case, bring, uh, what we thought would be at home dads together. The guys that would be able to meet up with us uh, at 10 AM on a Wednesday to go to the Whitney museum or to central park, uh, quickly realized that it's not just at home dads or people that, that wear that label that wanted to join the group. So, uh, made it a group for all dads, and that's what it's been ever since. So, what was that first, very first meeting like? Uh, I, I I remember it vividly. Actually, it was eleven year eleven years ago this week. Um, three of us with our uh, 
maybe six to eight month old babies sitting at daddy's diner on the Upper East Side. Uh, there are, there's no photo documentation. We, I'm sure we had cameras, but there were no smartphones at that point. There was no Instagram or Facebook at that point. <laughs> um, so we have, we have photos from early meetups, but not that first one, but the three of us were at a diner with our kids hanging out and Lance and I knew each other, but the other guy, uh, did not know us. He, he took a chance and, and came out to meet us. Well, it's, it's really interesting because when, my son, who is now 16, when he was first born, uh, my then wife and I discussed about, you know, daycare and about, um, you know, how are, how are we going to manage this? And I said, well, I, quite honestly, I just I would love to just stay home and, you know, be with him. And um, she said, well, I don't think you're going to do really well because you've never babysat. You're an only child. And I'm like, yeah. So, and it was the best, I would say he was about close to three, maybe two, two and a half, uh, before I had to relieve the duties of being a stay-at-home dad. But you are so right, Matt. When it came to finding places for he and I to go, it was, and nothing against moms, but you do need that male interaction. You do need that camaraderie. You do need that bonding to just maybe open up and say, Hey, I'm, I'm struggling with this. Was that, um, something that started organically as well within these groups, Matt? Yeah. And I, I I don't think we set out to, uh, to create a support group and we don't call ourselves a support group necessarily, but of course, uh, support happens. There's something certainly about uh, seeing the guys week after week after week at the park or the playground or wherever you happen to hang out. Uh, there's something about uh, talking to another dad, especially if you're in the same situation. If you're an at-home dad or you're a gay dad or you are a uh, working full-time dad, it's nice to connect and compare notes with with other guys in a similar situation. So uh, we try to set up, set the stage for support to happen. Um, and I think we, I mean, we, we don't have a resource as dads, moms, it's very natural. And the expectation is there that there will be other moms to uh, connect with. So there will be other moms that are already have created a community and that hasn't happened for dads. Um, and that's, that's what we're trying to create. Uh, you know, I remember years ago I was on LinkedIn and I can't remember which, it was a parenting group, and a, a mom chimed in to say, you know, there's just not enough mom groups. And I was livid, Matt. I'm just like pounding the keyboard going, are you serious? Please tell me where you're finding more dad groups than mom groups. And um yeah, she was not happy with my answer at all. But well, I, I think I think particularly for working women, they um, maybe not in an entirely similar way, but in a somewhat similar way, they don't necessarily feel at home uh, in a mom's group that is is potentially mostly at home moms uh, who are at at uh, the park at 10 a.m. So finding uh, finding the right mom's group, I don't know about if it's quantity of mom's group, but finding uh, a mom's group or a dad's group or a group for all parents that, that fits and then you kind of find your tribe. Yeah. And that's true. And I remember going uh, with my son, we went to a, a Jimboree group and I, of course I'm looking around and, you know, this was back in the day when I, I worked nights. And so uh, I'm like looking around and, Yep, I'm the only dad here, which was which was okay, but it, it kind of goes back to where you really wanted that kinship with an with another dad and just you know being being able to ask questions. So Matt, you said eleven years. Happy anniversary! Thank you. What uh, what lessons have have you learned from the eleven years of building? And I know. Um, from your website, the City Dads Group, that you know, it's not just New York. You guys have groups 
throughout the United States. And so what, what life lessons have you learned from the start? Uh, I think the best lesson or what I'm getting most out of the experience is just this opportunity to meet people that I would not be meeting otherwise, especially in this day and age where social media is so big and people are finding community in closed Facebook groups or on, on some other website. Uh, bringing people together in real life, I think, is really the heart of what we're trying to do. And really what we need to focus, continue focusing most of our time and effort on. Um, I just feel like in general, not just for dads, but in general, we need to be connecting with people in real life. We, we can understand somebody in real life. We can um, really be, be in their shoes, for lack of a and we're not really in their shoes, but we, you're much more polite to somebody in real life in most cases, or in, in our case, at a dad's group than you might be sitting behind your computer. Um, and I think you can really connect with somebody watching them uh, take care of their kid alongside you trying to take care of your kid. So uh, that in real life piece it was there from the beginning and something that is at the heart um, of our now 41 uh, groups across the country. Um, I've also learned that dads don't even know still uh, that they should be looking for a resource. They they know that their partners, or their, if they're married to a woman, that, or if they're having a baby with a woman, that that woman is likely going to be finding resources. And dads, sometimes we don't look for resources. Sometimes we don't think we need resources. And um, other times we just don't know that they're out there. So we uh, really... Uh, are continuing to try to work on making sure people know that we're here and that that we're not. It's not a scary opportunity to come and meet other dads. We're not necessarily uh, sitting uh, around a, a campfire with drums singing "Kumbaya." I've, ne- <laughs> I've never been to a meetup where that happened in a, our dads group, but I I believe there was a beach meetup with drums in, in San Diego. So I can't say it never happens, and I don't know how many feelings were shared at that meetup, but. Um, We really are just about getting the group of dads together uh, to experience something. It could be as simple as hanging out with your kids at the playground. Our NYC dads group this just last weekend uh, was able to go see the Lion King. We part of what we've done and what we try to do in each of these cities is um, really become part of the fabric of the family scene in those cities. So making connections with the Bronx Zoo so we can get a behind the scenes experience or uh, a Broadway show. Uh, We got 50 free tickets to see the Lion King on Broadway this weekend. So 25 dads and and their kids got to go see uh, the Lion King um, on Broadway um, as part of being uh, in this group. So big range. And I think that's uh, another great lesson is if you're going to have something like this, really dedicate yourself to, um, the experience part of it and creating opportunities for guys, guys and their families to do something uh, that they might not be able to do otherwise. Yeah. One of uh, somebody that I believe you would know, um, James, who does uh, fatherhood is lit. I follow him on Instagram and he was uh, showing pictures from the Lion King as well. He was. He's. He is a co-organizer for our NYC Dads Group. In addition to his work for Fatherhood is Lit, and uh, yeah, he was there as part of our group. I, and I love following him because he he's he's just funny when he when he's got the video camera going on with his kids. There was one recently where he was making the kids uh, rake leaves, and he's like, "Are we having fun?" And the kids are like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> Now, and he is great because he really is showing um, the full full span of what it's like to be an at-home dad um, and really welcoming guys into the conversation, not just at-home dads, but really especially welcoming uh, men of color into the conversation. Oftentimes, you follow a, a parenting uh, Instagram or YouTube or, or blog that is written from a, a white parent perspective. Um, so it's neat to see some of these other guys that are really active and engaged dads, um, and showing how they parent and we all parent differently. Um, but he's really invited, 
other guys into the conversation and really highlighted um, there's not one way to be a dad. There's not one way to spend a Saturday with your kids. Uh, and look at what this guy over here is doing. Um, look at what that guy over there is doing. And it's fun and it does inspire people. I know it inspires people. Is there a, is there a story that you could share about within the 11 years of something that really in a positive way um, can really put a, a, a wonderful spotlight on, on fatherhood? Um, let's see. There, there's a lot. Um, I think there are just so, so many conversations have changed over the 11 years that we've been doing this. Uh, we've been working, uh, we've been talking about uh, paternity leave for many, many years, I would say five or six years. 11 years ago, nobody was talking about paternity leave. It was not even, I don't, think it was even, um, I don't know, any, any companies, maybe there were some out there, but really the idea of paying a father to be off after the birth of his child was not, not something anybody was even thinking about. Uh, fast forward 11 years later, um, many, many companies are now offering uh, paid leave to moms and dads, adoptive parents to gay parents. Uh, and the conversation has changed now from um, let's get a policy in place to how are we going to get these guys to actually take the leave? And if, if we offer them eight weeks, how do we get them to actually take the eight weeks, which is not only important from a, a perspective of a dad digging in and learning how to be a dad. It also equalizes men and women in the workplace. If, if a woman is only is taking eight weeks off and men are taking a week off, then, um, that there's an imbalance at the workplace and at home. So I think it just, the, the progress we're making in that kind of a conversation, the progress we've made in the conversation about how dads are represented in the media. It, 11 years ago, uh, we started getting after some brands for making us look like buffoons. Like dad is the butt of a joke in, in almost every commercial ten, eight, nine, ten 10 years ago. Uh, now um, we see dads as just average parents. We don't want, they don't need to be heroes. They're not doing anything amazing by changing a diaper. But if you look at a Pampers commercial or a Huggies commercial now, you'll see it's, it's a dad and he's changing a diaper and he's doing it without a gas mask. And he's doing it uh, <laughs> like he's done it uh, every day since the baby was born. And that's, that's really the fun, a neat part of what we're doing as well. I uh, remember the... The one show that used to drive me nuts was Tool Time because it really, in my view, in my view, is that many of uh, Tim Allen's character, he constantly would make, in, make us men look like idiots. And it used to, it, that show used to drive me nuts because of that. And so... You know, I I applaud you for, you know, seeing that, you know, it is, you know, especially in a in a divorce situation where, you know, I firmly believe that even though you're you're divorced from your former spouse, the children need both parents in their lives, and there were so many times when I'm watching Tool Time where he really did make us you know, look like idiots. And then I, I always felt that because of that, because of the way we dads were portrayed is that it, it carried into the real life. And again, in the divorce world where majority of um, cases, uh, custody cases kept being rewarded for, to the mom and I did feel that the media had a lot to do with it, that they were not portraying dads in a positive light, that they didn't portray dads as a true caregiver. So, you know, in the in the past, I would I would even say five years, it looks like things are starting to finally change within the court system that judges are recognizing that dads can be the caregivers and 
and can be supportive. So it's it's just nice to see organizations such as yourself and uh, Dad to to Summit as well trying to get the positive fatherhood out in the mainstream. Yeah, and I mean, I yeah, I think the the court system um, and it's really state by state, right? The laws and, and the court system. It does seem to be. Um, a lot of states seem to be making progress. I have to admit, I don't know a whole lot about um, that piece of the the puzzle. Um, I do, we of course know many uh, divorced dads and many uh, divorcing dads struggling through the process. Um, it does seem like there's some he- there's some headway, and I actually see a lot of women joining the conversation. And I was talking about how men need to join the conversation about. Uh, the workplace and changing the workplace to make it more favorable for parents and people that have lives outside of, of the office. Uh, the court system and the divorce process, I feel like a lot of women are starting to join the conversation and saying it is not right to push one of the parents out. It is not right to assume that a mother is always going to be the better caretaker or that should be the only caretaker. And I feel like that that could help the conversation move uh, forward um, when women and men are standing together saying we need something different for our families in this system. I, I totally agree. And it, again, it is, it is very disheartening still hearing horror stories of uh, family courts. Um, so how many, uh, how many, uh, dad groups, city dad groups, uh, do you guys have? Uh, we just opened our latest in uh, Milwaukee, and that was number 41. So 40, 40 cities in the United States, and we have a Toronto dad's group in Canada as well. Oh, wow. What, is it, what does it take? So, for example, I know there's, because I live about an hour north of Denver, um, and I'm like, I, I would love to start start one of your groups on the northern side of Colorado. So what does it take to start one of these groups, Matt? Well, I guess first and foremost, we called it City Dads Group kind of intentionally. Uh, we're looking to create dads groups um, in big metropolitan areas. So Uh, We kind of think about it the same way maybe the NFL would think about it or other sports franchises like the Denver metro area. So our our group in Denver is intended to be inclusive of uh, the Denver metro area. So we don't have a separate Boulder dads group, Fort Collins dads group, Colorado Springs dads group. We have a Denver dads group that has dads um, in an ideal situation planning meetups in Boulder and planning things meetups in Denver and planning meetups in Colorado Springs. Uh, so you can get the full, we, you can have the full range of, of dads um, having the opportunity to get together, but that requires uh, members of the group to help run the group. And that, that is a central, we, we have usually one or two guys that want to start the group, but one of the, the core pieces of our puzzle is that you need to really create an environment where you're, asking people to help and inviting them in uh, to start planning meetups uh, to meet their needs. And it's not just about geography. It's about time of the day, time of the week. Those working dads that are working full time are not interested in meeting up at the Denver Zoo at 10 a.m. on a Wednesday. They may be interested in planning something at the Boulder Zoo uh, on Saturday morning. Um, so getting those those Boulder guys empowered to, to be able to participate in, in in running the group. Um, so certainly the heart of what we're trying to do is, is create an active group. So giving opportunities to guys to come together. We are, uh, also very active on social media and really trying to show the world what our groups are all about, what it looks like, not only to be an active and engaged dad, but also to be part of a dad's group and, and the support and resource that we're providing to each other, uh, just by gathering together. So being on social media, posting those pictures um, on the playground is an important part of what we're trying to do. It also helps us to connect uh, with 
the, the rest of the community. Uh, we're, we try to be very close to the moms groups in uh, the, the metro area or the mom bloggers or to the people that run the, the zoos or the children's museums or the science museums. So we can create those opportunities for dads to come together. Um, and social media is a big part of that. The zoo is excited to invite 10, of, 10 dads to come to the Halloween party, um, not only to create an experience for the 10 dads, but also for the to show on our Instagram these 10 dads having a great time at, at the zoo. So the marketing department is happy to invite us in because we're, we're demonstrating to the world how great it is to be a dad at, at the zoo. Uh, so we, we had the, the meetup experience, the social media experience, the the leadership development in terms of building a team, uh, the connection to the to the rest of the community, um, and then really, we part of what we're doing is is building this this network um, and building a national conversation or international conversation. So supporting uh, kind of what we're doing on a national level, whether it be with sponsors, whether it be our blog uh, where we have dads writing for from all sorts of perspectives from around the country. Uh, we have a podcast as well. Uh, so um, being part of this collective voice of dads across the country is kind of that fifth piece of the puzzle, or leg of the stool or whatever metaphor you want to use. Do you find that, um, because obviously you, you have to ask for help. You have to, you know, like you were saying, build a community. So you have to ask for help. Do you still find that a lot of dads are still hesitant asking for help? Uh, well, there's there's kind of two sides of that. We are asking for them to help join or to help plan and run our group. So they're certainly hesitant to do that. They're hesitant. I mean, A, they're hesitant to join. Uh, B, they're hesitant to join or to actually come to a meetup once they have joined the group. And certainly they're hesitant to host a meetup and, and contribute to running the group. So there's that side of the equation. And it, the other side of the equation, I think, goes back to the beginning. Certainly it is not, it's hard for men in general to ask for help. Uh, dads don't necessarily even think about asking for help or asking to be part of something or looking for a resource. So yes, I think it's still um, our opportunity, our struggle to get guys to recognize that uh, not only is this fun, it's going to be helpful to you uh, as a dad. It's going to be helpful to you as a partner. It's going to be helpful to you as a man to be part of, of a group. Yeah. And uh, I still, I, I still wish that a lot of us men can take a step forward and understand that, you know, asking for help isn't a weakness, it's a strength. And especially what, you know, you and Lance are trying to create, you know, trying to create these positive, safe places for dads and their kids to go to, that it's it's okay, you know, it's okay to maybe admit you need help in some some area. Maybe it's doing your daughter's hair. Maybe it's a cooking, maybe it's, you know, asking for, you know, transportation help. So it's, you know, we're, we're getting towards the end of 2019. And I still feel that as men, we still need that wake up call, Matt, that we still need, you know, that to be open and to be, you know, vulnerable to say, I need help. Absolutely. And I think that, I mean, that, that's a range of things that men need help with. I think what we're trying to do is get to the idea that uh, doing your daughter's hair is fun. And many of our guys have, there's an organization, Dad's Doing Hair, I think it's called, that has guys around the country that will come to a hair salon and show dads how to do their daughter's hair. So if we can create a meetup around that, it First of all, a lot of dads don't even think about doing their daughter's hair. Uh, maybe the first time they think about it is when they're a divorced dad and their daughter is, is there and somebody's got to do her hair at that point. So exactly. that, that's one point. But a lot of dads are starting to recognize that they need to do their daughter's hair. Or they want to do their daughter's hair. Or their daughters want 
them to do their hair a lot sooner than that in, in the context of every family. So um, us creating that opportunity for dads to learn how to do that uh, opens minds to, oh, dads, dads actually do their kids' braids and there are dads that are really proud of it. And it's not, it's not just hairstylists that are doing it. It's like this guy, this one of these guys in, uh, that runs our Vegas dads group, Colin, uh, is very proud of, of the work that he does on his daughter's hair. And his, uh, his Instagram posts have, have some very sophisticated hair designs that he's, he and his daughter have worked on that uh, are very impressive. And when most of his other pictures are of his cars, uh, his car collection and, and his love of cars. So it's not, it's, it's, it's normalizing the idea of men doing their kids' hair or men changing diapers or men hanging out uh, doing an activity together. One of the, the most fun meetups that seem to be popping up around the country, different dad's nights out is uh, hatchet throwing. Um, it's like uh, you, you go to one of these places. I have not been yet, but I've seen the pictures and they've got targets and you get to throw axes and it's not necessarily something you would do on your own, but if, Hey, that's on our meetup calendar this month, I want to, I'm going to go try that. Um, and a lot of guys, they come out and they say, I haven't been out on my own without my wife, without my family uh, for a year or two years or five years. Uh, so just giving this opportunity, this, <laughs> this license to guys to say, it's okay to come out. It's okay to come have a beer with other men and dads. It's okay to do your daughter's hair. It's okay to uh, be fine changing a diaper and doing something that, 10 years ago, even people were, there are still people out in the world proud that they haven't changed a diaper before. Yeah. I, oh, <laughs> I laugh because I still have, I have a picture from my former wife took uh, the day she went back to work and the day um, I was, you know, this is it. This is uh, on the job training. I am now officially a stay at home dad. And she uh, took a picture of me with our son and I'm changing a diaper. And I'll never forget Matt as, as she was getting ready to walk out, she said, are you going to be okay? And I looked at her and said, no, no, I'm not going to be okay. But uh, he, like I said, he's 16. So he survived uh, the first few years of his formative life with, with me uh, again, on the job training, um, doing diaper duty, uh, t times in the car where he, he got sick. I mean, I, I still say to people that that was the best job I've ever had was being a stay at home dad. I don't know. I, I've been home for 14 years now, so I'm, I'm right there with you. Um, and I, I think what we always say is none of the, there's no training for this. Maybe some people have babysat before. Maybe some people had siblings that they, they helped out with. But especially now in 2019, many women have never held a baby before. Many women have no experience doing this. Certainly many men still haven't had much experience doing this. So you just figure it out. And it is not rocket science. You There are choices that you have to make along the way, especially as they get older. I would say parenting the choices you, you have to make and the, the thinking behind those choices is a lot uh, more sophisticated as they get older than, than when they're babies. And the hardest thing you have to do is clean up after a poop explosion or barfing in the car or figuring out what you're gonna, your kid is going to eat or forgetting everything in your diaper bag. But it's, it's not rocket science. You just figure it out. And if you can ask somebody questions, all the better. Well, and that was the hardest thing for for me was I didn't know any other dads that were stay at home dads. I didn't know, you know, you know. Again, coming up on sixteen years, almost seventeen. He'll be seventeen in March. Oh my gosh! Now I feel old, Matt. But you know, not knowing any kind of resources, I don't even recall seeing any books out there. You know talking about being a stay-at-home dad. So it, you're right. It, it's not rocket science. 
but you do you do figure it out and right or wrong you you figure it out yeah and there's not really wrong in most of these cases there's a lot of we we debate a lot about a lot of things um but like you said our our kids grow up and uh there not all of our kids grow up um and are doing well. Some kids aren't doing well, but I don't think most people look back and say it was my decision to stay at home that, that caused them to, to go down this road. I think uh, the choices we make along the way, uh, we're, do- we're all doing the best we can, whether we're at home or whether we're at work. We all love our children, uh, whether we're at home or whether we're at, we're at work. So it's, I think there's a, a level of empathy that uh, we also need to allow each other that uh, um, says, it starts with the point that we're all doing the best we can and uh, continues to the point that uh, there isn't one way and, and judging each other uh, isn't helpful. And I do think, and I, I don't like to make broad generalizations, but I, I have noticed and I, I've compared notes with people who run mom's groups and are part of mom's groups. And I do feel like dads um, tend to be easier on each other, uh, less judgmental, uh, than than moms are on each other, um, they and I think the part of that is the expectations and the the definition of what it means to be a good mom is is uh, very strict, um, and the definition of what it means to be a good dad is uh, undefined. <laughs> I would say like and I, we, I've talked to a lot of at home dads that regularly. Uh, feel like they are rock stars because somebody is saying to them, wow, how great it is that you're able to take your three kids to the grocery store. How, what a great dad you are that uh, you're here at the zoo today with your kids. And obviously that's not, that does not make a rock star. That doesn't even make a good dad. He's, he's being a dad. He's doing his thing. Uh, and certainly moms aren't, aren't, aren't congratulated for getting their, their kids to the grocery store. Um, more likely they're judged because of the way their kids are acting at the grocery store. Um, but I think empathy, um, and, and, uh, kind of, again, recognition that we're all doing the best we can is, is a good starting point. It, it's true. Um, it, it's, I mean, I just, I mean, I look back and again, it was just wonderful. But the the one the one thing that I will mention is that the hardest thing for me was getting back into the workforce because, and I'm I'm assuming that many dads out there that w- were stay at home dads might have gone through this as well. Is that you know there's a little bit of you know gap in your resume and. I don't know. I mean, I'm going to, again, say that, you know, for many moms, that's, you know, that's natural. They stayed home. And then for dads, that's not so natural. And then when you're filling out job applications, they're like, well, what have you been doing the past two years? I see you've been working, you know, maybe some part time. I was a stay at home dad. And they look at you like you have a third eye at times. And it's just like, yeah, it's 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 okay. Yeah, I was a stay-at-home dad, and again, that that was something I encountered. You know, after uh, we decided my son needed some some more kids his age to hang out with. Yeah, no, I think um, I know a lot of at-home dads that have, have returned to the workforce, and they do say it is very challenging. Yes, dads are judged even more harshly than than moms are for a gap in their resume uh, because they do have to fight against even the social stigma. It's, it's not surprising that a mom is has stayed at home. However, I've talked to many at-home moms that have returned to the workforce also, and uh, it is not easy in any way, shape, or form for a, a woman to explain. It's easy to explain, but it doesn't necessarily, it's not recognized as a, a good choice or valuable from a work context. So they, they're left back in their careers or they're, they're taking a job that they're underqualified for. And again, I think this is a place that uh, dads have a great opportunity to learn from women uh, who have been working on this for 
the last 30, 40 years as since they since women entered the workforce in mass, or at least white professional women entered the, the workforce in mass, uh, they've been figuring out how to, to make this work. There are entire organizations that have been built to help women uh, return to the workforce after being out for a number of years. Um, and the whole job job sharing plans that for women that want to return to the workforce part-time. Um, so I think, again, it's a great opportunity for men to say, I like what you're doing here. How can we be part of this conversation also? Yeah. And I, I, I think it goes back to what you were saying earlier about, you know, just having those, uh, those talks, that communication between moms groups and dads groups and, you know, working together, um, you know, helping each other out, figure out, okay, here's a situation we're running into. What have you done in the past? Um, or, or has this come up? So I, I, again, applaud you for having those open lines of communication with not just your group, but with, with other mom groups as well. Now, I think I can't reiterate that piece of the puzzle enough. Um, there's a lot of dads who are out in the world speaking and writing about fatherhood and and sometimes um, they, their experiences have led them to or led them through a lot of negativity. And if you carry that chip on your shoulder uh, into t- 2019, as we go into 2020, uh, without recognition that we, there's a lot of opportunity to uh, recognize the change is, is, is happening um, and that th- there's a lot of opportunity for, for us to continue to make change. So continuing to talk to each other, continuing to figure out ways to work together rather than bashing, um, bashing the old system, bashing women, bashing moms. Um, it just doesn't, doesn't help us move the conversation forward. And that's, I, I'm I, the only point of, of me doing this, especially at this point um, is to help us move this conversation forward and, and provide uh, not just for dads, it's really for families, uh, this new context. Um, let's let families make decisions that are best for their families. Let's not worry about old gender expectations or the old ways of doing things. Let's help families really recognize the opportunity of, um, of life that we can, they, we can figure this out together with, without worrying about what other people are thinking of us. So Matt, tell us about uh, the podcast. Yes, so we we will start the seventh season of the Modern Dads podcast. Um, We, uh, back in the day with NYC Dads Group, we got emails from authors that were coming through town and wanted to sit down with us and talk about their book. Uh, And we had some great conversations. Uh, We usually spend about 10 minutes talking to the author about their book and then... uh, really spent the rest of the time talking about fatherhood and parenthood and masculinity or whatever the topic was. Um, but with podcasts coming around about six or seven, eight years ago, we started talking about a, a new way of having this conversation. Um, so part of some of our guests are um, authors that have a new book. Uh, some of our guests are researchers that have uncovered new research or have done some sort of study. Some of our, our podcasts are dads who've got uh, a unique story that uh, can be inspiring to others. And it's just been a fun, fun way to have good conversations. Um, and it's, it's, I, we actually, I considered stopping doing the podcast last year uh, because it's, it's hard, as you know, to uh, continue putting on a podcast and, and keeping it fresh. We have um, 80 plus episodes that we've done. And there's only so many con- times you're going to talk to somebody about their new book, a, a new book about family finance or sibling rivalry or whatever parenting topic that comes up. So finding ways to keep it fresh and new, um, it can, can be challenging, but uh, I found that I missed the, the podcast piece of, of what we were doing. So uh, we started started doing maybe fewer shows in the season. We started January to 
June of last year. And, and I think that's what we're angling towards again this year, um, looking to, to have some great conversations. And sometimes I'm the host. I have another host, uh, Whit Honey is his name, who's uh, been a writer for a long time, a blogger for a long time. He, he writes for the Washington Post. Uh, he's written for a bunch of other sites. He does a lot of the hosting of a lot of the shows as well to bring in a new perspective and really what we're trying to do is expand the conversation and make sure that uh, we're, we're offering perspectives from all sorts of different uh, angles and types of people. You know, this, <laughs> whenever I can uh, get a guest on the podcast that it's just, it just makes my day, Matt, because I know this is, in, in my view, this is my purpose in, in life is to be able to share uh, stories such as, you know, you and, you know, your organizations. And I, I just love the medium of podcasting because it is so, you can go anywhere with it. You can be in the car, you can be on the treadmill, you could be walking the dog and you learn so much. And you know, like you were just saying, different angles of parenting. I mean, it, it's like, again, part of our conversation was there's different ways of parenting. And it's always nice to hear a different perspective. Um, I mean, this past weekend, uh, my wife, son, and I happened to be at, at Sam's Club. And somehow we got on the topic of how I... Uh, we, my son and I had, were doing this little game when he was real young where I would pick him up and throw him onto the bed. Well, I threw him once a little too hard and he fell off the bed. And, and all of a sudden, I, I'm, I'm laughing about it. And then at the same time, I'm going, oh, was I a crappy dad? And I, I look at him, I go, Ah, you're okay after all these years. So again, that's, that's the one thing about podcasting is you really, you get to hear those, those stories and you get to hear different perspectives and, you know, it's just, it's nice, um, again, medium to, to have out there when, you know, maybe there was an episode you guys did where somebody learned something, they can always go back and hear it again and again and again. So I'm just a, I'm just uh, on my high horse about podcasting. No, and I think it, it's a, another opportunity for us to open some minds. There's many people who go through life, they've never met an African-American dad, or they've never met a Latino dad. They've never met a gay dad. They've never been a, met a transgender dad. Um, so getting to have those guys come on our show and, and talk about what fatherhood is like for them, uh, we're not breaking that much new ground. Um, but what we are doing is, if, if you didn't know, I know we were talking to a transgender dad and you listen to what uh, he and his wife are, are struggling through, you very much identify with that struggle. Uh, same is true for, for a black, the black dads that we've come on or the gay dads that we've come on. Not that there's no difference between uh, the struggle. There are certainly things that are unique to being a transgender dad or a gay dad or a black dad. But when it comes down to it, whether we're meeting in real life or whether we're talking on a podcast, um, there's that bond and tie that we, at the heart of it, we're, we're trying to be the best dads that we can be. Um, and if we can connect on that level, then uh, maybe there's some other places that we can connect as well. Do you find in your experience in your communication with other dads and moms, do you feel that dads beat themselves up more than moms. So for example, um, because of the day job I have, I, I'm a hundred percent travel. And so there are times where I've missed out on opportunities of seeing the kids in either a sporting event or, uh, some type of, uh, school activity. Do you find dads beat themselves up more or do you, in your experience, do you find moms I mean, I would say nobody beats themselves up more than moms, um, especially especially working moms. Um, the guilt, uh, even when 
Um, she's juggling everything and, and things are going fairly well. I don't think that you're going to find someone who beats them up, beats themselves up harder than, than moms do. Dads, and again, it's about judgment and expectations. She knows that uh, the people at work are judging her for being a mother and, and taking her eye off the ball at work. She knows that the other parents in the community are judging her for not being there for her children. Uh, so the, just that, that definition, again, of what it means to be a good mom is so stringent that uh, it's easy to find your, I think, and I'm not obviously a mom, but um, <laughs> I think that that's a big part of that puzzle. That said, uh, there's a great, Boston College has a center for work and family that has for the last 10 years uh, put out studies about dads. And I don't know which study it was, but one of their studies uh, they said that dads actually harbor more work-life conflict and, and more uh, guilt for working more and not spending time with their children than, than moms do, right? at least as, as reported, uh, more dads are, are feeling guilty about the fact that they're spending too much time at work and not enough time at home. And I attribute that more to, uh, that. not that dads are more guilty, it's that Moms have been working on trying to, to assuage that guilt, find that balance, find that, that integrated life that they're looking for for the last 30, 40 years. Dads are just now coming to the realization that they want to and need to be good at their careers, and they want to be a different type of dad than the dads that many of us had. I, have, I had a great dad, but I grew up in the, the 70s, 80s. Dads, for the most part, went to work. They came home and uh, my mom was an at-home mom and dinner was on the table. She had done all the laundry. She had gotten us to all the sports practices, doctor's appointments, camps, <laughs> school, all of that, which is my life now. But um, the world, the definition of what it means to be a good dad is, is ever-changing and growing. And I always say, I keep saying that this is the best time in the history of humanity to be a dad because it's not just about bringing home the, the animal to, for the family to eat. It's not just about discipline when things go terribly wrong. It is about those great moments um, that you talked about with your son. Or, I mean, not, not the dropping your son. You, ha you had a moment with your son that all parents have um, that you, might, you could look back on with guilt, but you, you were having fun with your kid. You yeah. know, probably think of 99 other times where you were having a great time that that didn't, that's not how it ended. So um, I think that um, we have this great opportunity to uh, really participate in family life that we haven't had before. And that brings on a certain level of guilt. And that, I mean, it's harder to, uh, be this type of dad in many ways. It's harder when you when you're joining your partner in all of the work of family life. That means you have to communicate a lot, and that communication isn't easy, and it doesn't always go well. It's a lot easier to say, "Okay, you've got all that, I've got all this," but that doesn't necessarily work in a lot of families. Um, so, I, I I like where we are as dads right now. Define what a great dad is, then. I mean, to me, a, a great dad is is the one who is recognizing that there there is no definition of uh, that divides um, between mom and dad. Uh, there's there's family life. There's there's a whole life that you, if you're looking at, at at a whole life with your partner, there are things that need to be done. Some of that is is making money for your family. Some of that is laundry. Some of that is getting your kids to the doctor. Some of that is addressing special needs that your, your child has. So the dad to me that is looking at that whole life and saying, how can I, what do I need to do to tackle this? How are we going to work together if, if I'm working with a partner to, to, make, this, uh, to make this all work? Um, and that really has no definition of what that looks like. It's, 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 we're going to figure out this together, or I'm going to figure this out uh, as a whole. Well, Matt Schneider, co-founder of City Dads Group. Matt, thanks for coming on. I, I 
greatly appreciate it. I greatly appreciate your time and definitely what your organization is doing to help promote positive fatherhood out there. Well, thank you for having me on. It was a fun conversation. Thank you for listening to Blending the Family, the podcast. If you come back, you get a two-for-one coupon. Woohoo! Daddy! Wait. Please leave a rating and review. However you get this podcast, whether it's through the mail or from your neighbor or listening in uh, under the couch. I don't know. You tell me. <laughs>